Hello and good afternoon. My name is William Green and I'm honoured to be talking to you all today. Now I want to talk to you first about my work. But then I'm going to move on to talk about traveling as part of my job and for pleasure. Looking at how I ended up in this job and my path from university through to the career I'm in now. I'm then going to explain a little bit more about the type of clients that I work for. And you can see some of the photographs that I took for them. And after that, how I actually started working and traveling for my work. And also very importantly, how travel has been a key part of my life as a photographer. And then I'm gonna to touch on two countries that I've worked in. So, starting with my educational path and how I ended up in this career. My career path from university has been an interesting one. I was educated at Goldsmiths College, part of the University in London. This is an arts college that has many other areas of study and courses they're interested in different cultures and they all tended to feed in to my photography degree. The course was a broad one, studying media, communications and culture studies, but specialising in photography. I spent three years mostly hiding in the photography department during my time, so I've always loved photography. After university, I started by assisting established photographers, and you can see some of their work over the next two slides. This is a traditional path to becoming a photographer in the UK and many other countries. Now, some photographers work in a studio, but I chose to seek out photographers who traveled for the companies that they were taking pictures for. This travel was sometimes just around the UK. I've been to many places around Britain, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. But I also travelled further afield too. The last slide you saw was Costa Rica. Now in these two slides, you can see images taken in Mexico and in Switzerland. Although often challenging, there are a number of unique things about my job. Each photo shoot is different to the one before and each location can be very different as well. And that leads us on to the thing I enjoy most, and that's traveling for work. I've now had the chance to travel to over 30 different countries around the world. These include Madagascar, Mexico, China, Australia, and Argentina. In many cases, I've been back to some countries repeatedly. Costa Rica, who you, where you saw on the last slide, I also have visited it again this year. America, for example, I've been to over 12 times in the last 10 years. Now, some of my favorite trips have been flying across northern Madagascar to reach a small vanilla plantation that would have taken us too long to drive to, that you can see here. For this job, we had to shoot vanilla flowers. And these flowers only bloom for a short period of time. For another shoot, we flew to the Canutes in Mexico. 
that you can see here on the right. Now, these are a series of small pools set in stone in the jungle near the sea that you can dive and swim in. Essentially, they're underwater caves inland from the sea. And in this particular image, we had to shoot a diver for a whiskey commercial. Maybe one of the coldest would be here on the left. We were dropped onto a glacier in Switzerland to shoot two snowboarders for a beer commercial. Now I want to explain a bit more about myself. I'm a photographer and increasingly a director who works for various different companies shooting photographic imagery for them. This can be in the form of advertising campaigns, through to marketing brochures, digital content, or photography for magazines and newspapers. A few recent clients of mine you may have heard of include Chanel, Uber, and the Japanese car brand Toyota. We call it commissioned work when we're asked to photograph for clients. And the image you can see here, this was shot for Chanel. But I also take pictures for my own projects. And these projects I'm interested in urban and natural landscapes. Urban means the city, through to people and the communities that live in those places. Now I'm gonna talk now about some recent campaigns that I've worked on. In some of them, such as the Chanel image shown here that was shot in Madagascar, we travel quite far. In this image here, this was shot in Southern France. Again, it was for Chanel and they wanted to show the natural ingredients used in some of their skincare products. And also show some people who cultivated and grew the ingredients used in them. Now, this particular image is of the camellia flower. It's one of 2,000 different camellia flowers, and it's picked by hand and used as an ingredient in their Hydra beauty cream. And moving on, this image shows the Solidajo flower. Now, this is a flower that botanists and scientists have discovered helps the skin not to grow old as quickly. And it's used in one of Chanel's creams. This image was taken in a research laboratory in Vienna, in Austria. This second image was again taken in the same laboratories. Sometimes I don't travel far for my work. This Toyota campaign that you can see here was shot next to an airfield in Southern England, about two hours drive from where I live in London. You can see in this image, we altered the ground to make it look like it was a different landscape. And that, after, that happens quite a lot in photography. You can see here that it looks like a farmer on a farm but this image was actually taken beside a airfield. What we did is we added bales of hay, we brought sheep in and had the grass and soil turned over so it looked like farmland. You'll find this in movies, in photography, in advertising, where things get changed, they look somewhere different. You all know that Many films are shot in studios, but you'll often find in photography that we sometimes change the landscape outside to make it look like somewhere different. Traveling can be costly, so anything that can be done to avoid it often is. In this second image from the same campaign that was shot only a few meters from the image you saw before, we picked an area of ground when the grass was really long we added in some wooden tables so it looked like a picnic area or an area where you may eat food outside. Another image from the campaign, we actually shot a car on the runway, but we made the runway look like a car park. 
this whole campaign for the Japanese car brand Toyota was taken to highlight the benefits of buying a used or secondhand Toyota car from a Toyota dealership. Now, I love the job of working to an exact set of rules when shooting for companies. Clients are very detailed in how they want their product or service to be photographed. And I always enjoy this challenge, but my own work is where I get the most creative satisfaction. Now this image and the next one were both shot when I was away in different places. And I take pictures of wherever I go. This one here was shot in Tokyo, in Japan. Whereas this image was shot in Shanghai, in China. I always try and tell stories with my own work. Sometimes that's by creating stories whilst walking around and taking pictures of the things I see. It could be things I find on the street, in the architecture or the landscape. For many photographers, it's about documenting a place that they see. And I often go back to places I've visited before, sometimes a number of times, each time taking different photographs. But by doing this, I finally build up a larger story of a place. I don't just take pictures when I'm away. I also take pictures where I live in England. This image and the next one were both taken in London. Both cars and people are popular things for me to photograph. This means wherever I am, either work or pleasure, I always make a point of exploring places to see whether I can take pictures there at the time, or maybe I want to come back and take pictures at a later date. Walking, cycling, driving, I always cover a lot of miles when I'm looking for things to take pictures of. Sometimes I try and tell stories. So I might get people, models or actors to wear certain clothes or have them doing certain things in a setting. Other times it will be less staged or set up and it will be more about me documenting things that I see. Maybe a group of people with a special interest, a sport or hobby, or it might be a person or group of people who collect certain types of cars or automobiles or have a particular or unusual job. I want to move on and talk about some of the countries I photographed in. I've been fortunate to return multiple times to some countries. This means I get to see different areas of the country, different cities and landscapes. Now, like the Sony Bravia shoot shown in the earlier slide when I was assisting in Costa Rica, but more recently I returned to the same country shooting a commercial project for Chanel. And that's the first country I want to talk to you about today. In January of this year, I was commissioned by Chanel to travel to Costa Rica. The client wanted to show the process of how their skincare products are made. In this case, they wanted to focus on one ingredient, Costa Rican honey and how they use it in their cream. So we traveled to Costa Rica to document the farmers and the farming of the ingredients. This was my first international job after the outbreak of COVID. So it meant there was a lot more planning than normal. And this was to ensure that everyone had the correct paperwork to enter. Now, like all the places I visit for work, I always read up about the country, the people, and for me, one of my favorites, the food. Now, Costa Rica is a very safe place to travel to. Its population are also very healthy and very happy. Now, we spent most of our time in the Putarinas province, which is classed as a blue zone, meaning their life expectancy is some of the highest in the world. It shares its blue zone status with the Kinawa in Japan. Now, we flew from London to San Jose. It took us 14 hours. 
and we then planned to stay in San Jose for the night to rest as the next day we had a long journey ahead of us. We arrived just before sunset, but it was still warm. It was a Sunday evening and the local people were relaxing on the city streets after the weekend. When we arrived, the rainy season was just ending. So I was expecting the climate to be humid and sunny, but it was actually very dry and hot and sunny. As the rainy season had just finished, everything was really green and vibrant. All of the flyer, flowers were in bloom and the leaves were green and bright. Now, as a photographer who takes pictures outside, the sunlight is really important to me. In Costa Rica, the sun rose early. 5.30 in the morning. As it's so close to the equator, the sun rises quickly and the light itself is strong and hard. And I'm used to working in different countries and always pay close attention to the types of light that places have. In southern Spain, for example, the light is different to southern California. Los Angeles, where I've worked a lot, the light is quite different to Costa Rica. And even in the midday sun, the light has a slight warm quality to it. Now, the next day, we had a six hour car journey and a one hour ferry ride to reach the location we were taking pictures in, in the Potrinas province. It was a long journey, but I was able to see different landscapes as we went. The colors were bright and colorful, lots of trees and flowers in bloom and lots of wildlife. My favorite were the monkeys. Now, unlike London, the homes have a covered area outside where people eat most of their meals. Extended families, so grandparents, live at home and everyone eats together under the covered part of their houses, giving them shade from the sun. Outside of the cities, the roads are quite interesting, very bumpy and without paving in many areas, which meant traveling around was very dusty. The country whilst we were there due to COVID had a curfew from 10 p.m. till 5 a.m. This is because there's lots of road accidents at night and they wanted to keep their hospitals empty for COVID patients. So we traveled in the daytime. Now the good thing about traveling for work is that we have local producers who plan our trips and give us an itinerary or schedule for each day. Now, arriving in Costa Rica, one of the things that I did notice is it's a country where everyone is friendly and smiles. Even though people were wearing masks, you could tell they were smiling at you under their masks. Their eyes showed their smiles. Now, with this job, the days were long, so we could photograph just after the sun rose just before the sun was setting. This is because the light is softer then. It makes the pictures look better. But it was also the time of the day when the bees were most active. And obviously for this project, we were photographing bee farmers. So most of our pictures were taken during the early morning and late afternoon. Now the bee farmers, the people, they generally had small farms and kept a small amount of beehives on their land for honey. So my alarm was set for 5 a.m. most days to capture the bees. Now, I always try and learn a few phrases in the local language before I go to countries to photograph. Here, I was lucky to have a local producer who could help translate for me as I was taking pictures of real people. And in many cases, they weren't used to having their pictures taken. In my job, a lot of it is about making people feel comfortable. If the people you're taking pictures of feel calm and relaxed, then the portraits are calm and relaxed. Now here, everyone we met was so friendly and welcoming. And it's what I remember most about the country. 
We did manage to have one day for ourselves whilst we were in Costa Rica. So we spent it in Montezuma. This is where lots of tourists visit to surf. Tourists come from across the country and from other countries to ride the waves. Now for me, my favorite food whilst I was in Costa Rica was ceviche. I'm sure you're familiar with it. It's very similar to sashimi. But the fish is cooked in lemon or lime juice. I liked how you could find it everywhere, from fine dining restaurants to street food vendors. One of the other foods I found a lot was plantains. This is a type of savoury banana that's finely sliced and fried and sold all over Central and Southern America. Now I want to move on to my second country. And this is one that I'm sure you're all familiar with. So I hope you don't get too bored. Now, even when traveling for holidays, I always research the country I'm going to. This is to see if there's anything interesting that I want to take pictures of. Now for this trip, it was my first trip to Japan. I was actually traveling there to take pictures of a dear friend's wedding. Now, there were a number of places I had planned to visit and photograph. Some of these might be the more common tourist places, but it was important to me to try and find some less well-known places that tourists maybe don't visit. And I often do that wherever I'm going. And this next image is of the Kirin cycle racing. Now I had planned to photograph the Kirin cycle racing and had marked out a couple of tracks to visit. In Europe, Kirin is seen as something quite amazing among cycling fans, especially those who are interested in track cycling. People are especially interested in the fact it takes place outside in Japan and the history surrounding it and how there's a, such a wide age range of riders at races. Here I was surprised that all the spectators were male and in many cases older men. In Europe, there's a large age range across the spectators and they're also both male and female. Now after leaving the Kirin, feeling unhappy, I couldn't quite get the pictures that I wanted to get. I decided to get off the metro early and walk back to the place where I was staying. Now, as I walked back through the suburbs of Tokyo, I ended up finding one of my favorite personal projects I've shot to date. I walked down a quiet side street to find it full of taxi drivers sleeping. There were over 30 taxis lining the street with each of their drivers resting from the working day many with towels over their faces, aiding their sleeping. This was really interesting to me because in British culture, being in a professional job, no one would sleep in such a public way. I found something very beautiful in the people resting and sleeping in their workplace. Now, after photographing every driver I found, I actually came across a driver who was awake. So I initially tried to show him what I was doing with hand gestures. He seemed a little concerned at first. Now his English and my Japanese were not very good. So I showed some photographs on the back of my camera so he could see what I was doing. I really wished I could have spoken more than just a hello and thank you. Now, sometimes in photography, you've got to help come up with a different plan if what you're taking pictures of doesn't work or look right. But I've always liked taking photographs of motoring environments. And for me, this collection of portraits of sleeping taxi drivers seem to represent Japan as a whole, a country that's both deeply traditional, but also very modern and very advanced in its service culture. 
all the drivers drove the same Toyota Comfort model of car whilst wearing white gloves and the same dark suit. One thing I did notice when I was in Tokyo is that wherever you were, day or night, you only have to wait a few minutes for a taxi to go past. Now, moving on, I want to talk about some of my experiences and my food experiences. And this is one of the things I enjoyed most in Japan. It's something I always look forward to wherever I'm traveling, whether it's food served in restaurants, on the street or sold in shops or supermarkets. Before I go, I always wonder what the food is like and what food I'd like to try and what food I might not be so keen on. And Japan was no different. There were loads of food I enjoy. And there was loads of food I looked forward to eating in Japan, from sushi through to various soba, udon and ramen. But one of the things I really loved and was very surprised about was takoyaki. I'd not had it before. It had such a developed taste where I could taste all of the elements, even though it was deep fried in hot oil. I'd also not expected something to be so gooey inside, but it was also savory. From the QP mayo to the sprinkle of a nori and the bonito flakes, everything about it was so tasty and unexpected. I've now started to see them elsewhere in the world, but they're never as good as the ones I tried in Japan. And this image is of Los Angeles, taken from a hill looking down over the city. And for this next section, I want to talk about being prepared. For me, it's one of the best ways to enjoy traveling and your traveling experience. So I always recommend doing some research in advance. There's the obvious things like checking the weather and temperature. What's the weather like where you're going? Are you gonna need jumpers, a raincoat, sunglasses, or sunblock or suntan lotion? I find this is especially important if you're coming from a city or a place where the weather is very different to where you're going or perhaps you're not used to weather like this. You could be caught out sometimes. I want to have to travel from a shoot in Los Angeles in the summer at the last minute to a shoot in the Rocky Mountains in North America. Although I purchased some more cl warm clothes once I arrived, it was so cold in the helicopter where we were taking pictures of that the photographer and I's lips both went blue. And now that being prepared also covers when you're taking pictures of people too. I always try and be polite when taking pictures of people, whether you're wanting to photograph one person or a few people, I always find it's best to try and make eye contact first. If you don't speak their language, you can always raise your camera slightly and point to it. You'll soon understand how they feel when you do, based on how they act. I find a gentle smile always helps to relax people and often leads to a more favorable response. If you're elsewhere and want to photograph a house, a car or something on the street, don't hide what you're doing. Don't be too noisy either. Instead, I just tend to find that if you're more obvious, and you do things in a quiet and calm manner, people get less suspicious than if you're creeping around or running around quickly. I've spoken about some advice when you're taking photographs of people, but one thing I always say to everyone I speak to is developing an eye for photography takes time, but with practice, you will get better. And one of the nice things in this day and age is you don't need a big expensive camera to take pictures. You can use your phone or a small compact camera. And actually, I find that if you're using a camera phone, many people don't even notice that you're taking pictures. 
Whereas if you've got a big professional camera, people notice straight away and they act differently. I want to give you a few different tips that I find have helped me when I take pictures. I always say, know your camera, whether it's a phone, whether it's a film camera or something else. Get to know the settings. Spend a few minutes reading the manual, learning the buttons, just so you don't miss that great shot trying to work your camera out. Now, lights, everything in travel photography. I've mentioned the times of day that we took pictures in Costa Rica. And that can also be used to help your own picture taking. What is what we call taking pictures in the golden hour. This is when the sun is low in the sky. It's when, if you take pictures an hour before sunrise and an hour before sunset, golden hour, it throws a magical warm glow across everything, but only providing the sun's out. If you take pictures in the middle of the day, when the sun is really high in the sky, you'll find that the light's very harsh and it makes for contrasty pictures. Everything looks silhouetted, either really bright or really dark. So if you can wait for a bit later in the day until the light's softened, you'll find pictures, and especially pictures of people, look a, not, look a lot nicer. Composition and framing. Make sure you run your eyes around the entire frame when you're taking pictures to make sure you're not accidentally cutting off something important. Double check the top of a mountain and it's, it's fully in frame. Equally, if you're taking a picture of a friend, make sure that you're not cropping any of them out of shot. I always say, move around. When you arrive at a scene to take a picture, don't just fire off some frames straight away. Walk around a bit, get closer, move back, step to the left, step to the right. You will find that you get far better considered pictures. If you're taking pictures of a landscape or a river, for example, maybe see if you're able to incorporate some interesting rocks into the scene instead of just water. Better yet, take multiple pictures, fill up those memory cards. If you have loads of options, you can always edit your pictures after and to find your favorite. All right, that brings us to the end. I want to thank you so much for letting me talk to you all today. I really hope you've enjoyed what you've heard and equally you've enjoyed looking at my photographs too. Thank you so much. Have a great day.